Hello, this is Boshar. In this tutorial, we are going to practice how we can associate two CQLize models together. As usual, we have this repository for this tutorial and we are going to start our implementation from this relationship start branch and the content of this tutorial can be found in this branch relationship final. So if you would like to follow the tutorials, just clone this repo check out this branch, this relationship start branch and repeat the things we are going to do in this tutorial. The project is already cloned and it is opened in VS Code right here and let's go over the structure here. This application is shaped through the tutorials we have seen so far and we have the user package, corresponding user routing handlers and also we have this article, but so far in this application, this user and this article has no relationship together. So if an article is submitted from a user, uh, we have no information regarding to that user. So this, the owner of the article is unknown at this point. Now we are going to implement this functionality, but also we will be providing that information through this get articles endpoint so whenever the articles are requested it is also going to be containing the corresponding user int so let's start this implementation now in this application we have this basic authentication functionality and we had used that one right here in the user router where we are deleting the user or where we are updating the user here we have this basic authentication middleware and basically we are checking that authenticated user like this and if there is no authenticated user we are returning a forbidden response otherwise we are processing the request and doing the things that requires this handler to be done so we will do the same thing for the article router currently we only have this get endpoint but we will also have router post and again this is going to be articles and since this endpoint needs to know who the logged in user is we are going to use this middleware basic authentication so let's get that one basic authentication from shared basic authentication by the way instead of this basic authentication we can use the jwt uh, you can just replace this part this basic authentication part with the jwt middleware and that's it you don't need to do anything else basically it's going to do the same thing the implementation we are going to do here is not going to be affected by the authentication mechanism we are implementing so we have this middleware and we will be using this middleware in this route handler and basically in this one we are going to have this handler function and I'm just going to copy this part. We are taking the authenticated user from request object and if it doesn't there we are returning this error. Let's do the same thing for this one. So at this step we have the authenticated user and if we check this uh, this uh, middleware here we can see the authenticated user is actually the exact user object returned by this user service method and this contains the user id user email username all the fields uh, we have in the user table so at this point we have the user object but we need to update our article model here uh, so we are going to store the user information we will be associating this user with this article and uh, there will be a field right here and that one is this let's say it's going to be user id and basically this is going to be the data type will be a number and so we have this id in this article and here in this post handler in the request we are going to have this content only this content will be sent via the post request and here let's create the article object and in the article we will have content and we will take that one from request 
body and in that body we will have the content and the next thing is the user id and we are going to take the user id from this authenticated user and authenticated user has this id and all we will do is just call article create and we will pass this article object since this is an async operation let's await here and in the end let's send a response back and this is going to be a success response and let's say this is just telling it is created now saving all these changes and running the application now for the client i'm not going to use postman but i'm going to use this thunder client this is an extension you can install in the vs code this one thunder client and it is quite similar to the postman and you can just create new request or you can go over the history of your activity and use those requests so the request i'm going to send is this one post post request to this endpoint and in this request we are going to send this authentication and in the application uh, here let's open this user's endpoint so this is sending a get request to these users and the application initially has these users the user one user two user three and in this request uh, we can choose whatever user we would like to use and the credentials are like this this is user let's go with the user one and the password is we we can see that one here index.js the password is this one so i'm just going to send this request but in the body it has this object json it has this content and it is saying the article and let's say this is going to be article from user one so sending the request the request is sent and now if i open the get articles endpoint so this is the get articles we don't have authentication for this one and also we don't have the authentication middleware anywhere in this route handler so we are getting the articles and basically it is returning back this object there is this id there is this content and this user id this user id one belongs to the user one and we are sending our request with user one and here also in the user list we can see user one has this user uh, the id one and if we let's say let's send another post request with user five and the authentication will be user five at mail.com sending the request and if i get the articles here we have the second article from user five and the user id is five so this authentication functionality is checking the user uh, and assigning that user's id to the article object and saving it to a database and if we send this request with no authentication here it is sending back this forbidden message so the authentication is working like this one now uh, let's update this part currently this is just returning this article array having this user id but let's make sure this returns the user object in it so uh, we can do this by associating this article with the user and we do that uh, right here in any of these models so from user we can just import the article and the article is here under article article and now we are going to do this this article belongs to the user object and that's it and now in the article router in this get articles we can include the the user object like this this find and count all is taking this object and for the pagination we were setting the limit and offset but now we want to include this query 
the user objects and we do that by using this include and this is taking an array and in this array we will have objects and this object is looking for which type of what's the model of the included object and this is going to be user so let's get the user from the user folder user model and this is going to be added to the article object here uh, so it is looking for a property name and we define that one with as and we can say this is going to be added as user field to the response and in this user object we can limit the attributes we are looking for but first let's save all these changes and try this one by the way in each restart the application is starting from empty database and it is initializing only five users so the articles are gone now and here in the post articles let's send a request with the user one and let's get the articles here we have this response having this article object and now it is containing this user object and basically user has this fields in previous tutorials we have limited the, the, the attributes we are showing to the user and we have done that one let's open the user service so in this user service when we are listing the users we asked only these attributes to be shown but now in this one we are also displaying the password and we don't want that to be uh, visible to users so we can use the attributes just like this one in this query too when we are including a model we can also use the attributes for this one to limit the uh, the attributes we want to show to end user and also we can do the same thing for this part so this part is for the article and the included part is for the included tables fields and uh, for the article we are going to just show the id and content so saving this one and uh, there's a missing comma here saving it now the application is restarted so sending an article and getting the articles now the the response is like this we only have the id and content for the article and for the included user object we have id username and email so we associated this article to user and now we are able to include that user in the query results but if we get the users and if we want to include the articles for that users we need to do one more change so in user service this is the get users functionality again we are going to use the include to include the the, the tables and this has an object and we are going to include article and the article is here the article model is here we are going to include the let's say model is article and we are going to include that one as articles uh, because the user can have multiple articles so we want it to be included as articles uh, so saving this one so if we send this request it is failing at this point uh, let's cancel this one and let's post an article and try it once again so we have an article and if we get articles we have the article and the corresponding user but if we get users we have seen nothing because the even we are using this article in this include part the association between these models are only one way so 
only from article point of view uh, we are able to include the user if we want to to be able to access to articles from user point of view then we need to add the the other way associations and that one is user has many has many of article and as a second parameter we can define the options and in this options user is going to be part of the article table and we do that by this property here user id column and this is going to be the foreign key and we define that one here foreign key is the user id so saving this one the application is restarted again sending a post request and now if we get the users here we can see this user one has articles and currently it has one article and if we post multiple articles article from user one sending this one too and let's send this one like this and if we get users here we have this user one and we have a list of articles coming with this user object so that's how we can do the association between the models in sqlize of course this implementation has flaws like the the user may have uh, thousands of articles and when we are listing users we would not want to get all these articles in the response uh, so uh, the implementation can be enhanced but the, the main focus for this tutorial was to show how we can associate the models and how we can update our queries to include that model in the result so that's all for this tutorial. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next tutorials.